And looking at this first example, we'll call it number 22, I have 21 over 9. Now before I start trying to make a mixed number out of that, that's a whole number along with a fraction, because I know that 21 is larger than 9, um, let's go ahead and see if we can reduce it and look for a common factor. All right, now think about 21. What can you break apart 21 in? All right, I'm thinking 3 times 7. And on the bottom, 9 is 3 times 3. All right, notice that that top three and the bottom three can cancel each other out. In other words, three divided by three is one, and then it leaves me with seven-thirds, okay? However, seven-thirds is an improper fraction, and usually we can't leave our answer that way unless we're talking about ratios. So what we need to do is think about how many times is three going to seven? Well, three times two is six. That means I'm one away. There's a remainder of one. So two times with one as a remainder keep the same denominator. You're always going to keep the denominator here. And so my answer is two and one-third. All right, let's look at 38 over two. Now I can go ahead and, you know, similar to the previous problem, I can um, factor out a two out of each number and that'll shrink it down to 19 over one. Okay, or I do notice that two goes evenly into 38 19 times. So either way you do it, the answer is the whole number 19 and there will be no fraction left over. All right, let's skip down to number 27, 15 over 45. Um, I do know that 15 goes into 45 and the common mistake is to say, oh, that goes in three times, my answer is three. No. Remember that the 15 is the smaller number and it's on top of the fraction. So what I need to do is think of it as 15 times one and 15 times three, which will give us the 45 on the bottom. Okay, in other words, the answer is there is one third. All right. Yes, it's okay to factor out um, threes and fives and so on, but the trick is to find the largest number, and that way it only takes one step, one-third. Okay, and finally, 18 and 15, 18 fifteenths. If I divide 15 into 18, it leaves me with one and three left over. Okay, so I can go ahead and change it into a mixed number first, and remember that I keep the same denominator of 15, so it's 1 and 3 fifteenths, and I'll need to simplify that. However, sometimes it's easier just to simplify or reduce looking for a common factor first. So I notice that 3 goes in each number because I know my multiples of 3 pretty well. So I'm thinking of 18 as 3 times 6, and I'm thinking of 15 as 3 times 5. So I do have a common factor of three. Those cancel each other out. In other words, three divided by three is one. And so I get six fifths. All right, however, again, most of the time we want to, do not want to leave our answer in improper fraction form. So now we divide it out because six is bigger than five. The top number shouldn't be larger than the bottom number. So how many times does five go into six? One whole time. There's one left over, that's my remainder, it goes on top, keep the same denominator. So, official simplified answer, one and one fifth. That's just another name for 18 fifteenths. <laughs>